So I'm going to snug up to them, and I can once again point my foot or I can flex my foot. I'm going to be up on my elbows, and I'm going to take my ball, and I'm going to place it behind my knee. Now, in this position, I'm going to find my stretch. Now, the easy version is just forget the ball, go up to a wall, put your kneecap and your blocks up against the wall, and then the wall will keep your shin vertical. And then you're going to stay in a stretch. You're going to have a little bit more of a quad stretch kind of dragged into or layered into that, but you won't have to actively <laughs> keep the ball in place to keep yourself in some knee flexion. So that variation is a little bit easier and it is something you can play with. Now feel free to walk your other hip or your other leg off to the side a little bit as well. Play with different positions that feel comfortable for you. Once you're in this position though, I'm once again gonna press my elbows into the ground and then I'm gonna give myself a good exhale and as I exhale, I'm gonna try and tuck my tailbone underneath me, which will make your hips or your glutes look a lot smaller, but it's gonna drag more tissue into a stretch in the front. So little exhale, or sorry, full exhale as I do a little bit of a press, I can't talk today, do a little bit of a press through my elbows into the ground. There. So now I'm in a stretch. However, like I said, I am actively working a little bit to keep that ball in play and to make sure that I don't lose that ball. But like I said, you have the easier alternative of just snugging up to a wall. I could have put my plyo box behind my leg as well and that would have kept my shin up and that's fine too. Now we're gonna hang out here, we're gonna stretch a little bit. While you guys are hanging out and stretching, I'm gonna talk you through what our pails and rails are gonna look like here. So when we're doing our pails contraction, you are going to be trying to drive your thigh into your blocks. So what that would mean is if I were to, I'm gonna come out of this just to demonstrate. If I were to put a weigh scale directly underneath of your blocks, you are trying to press your thigh down into those blocks as if trying to swing your leg through. So when you're in that position, you're trying to drive your leg up and you're engaging all of that front side tissue in the process. You're not worrying too much about squeezing the ball on that one. That's gonna come in more on the rail. So if you're using the ball right now, don't worry about squeezing it super hard on the pails contraction. Keep it in place. Your focus is gonna be on the front side stuff. If you're not using the ball and you just have your leg up and your shin is vertical because you have a wall here, then same thing. You're just gonna think drive your thigh down but don't let your pelvis position change. So in doing so, you may notice that your pelvis wants to slip into extension. Don't let that happen. Keep that pelvis where it is. You just gave me that exhale, that press through your elbows and that tuck back of your tailbone, which means you've kind of rounded your low back. Keep it rounded as you drive your thigh down. And in fact, keep it rounded the entire time. When we then reverse and we do our rails contraction, of course, it's the reversal of that. So then if you have your ball, I want you to squeeze the crap out of that ball and you are going to try to pull your thigh up off the blocks without extending your low back in the process. So again, you're trying to keep that pelvis stable. You're trying to move your leg bone on your pelvis without your pelvis moving because then if you manage to lift that leg up, which honestly, I don't actually expect you to, you should be in a stretch right now, but if you manage to, then we make sure, okay, it's not coming from the low back. If you lift that leg up at all, it is coming from your femur moving on your pelvis and not your pelvis moving on your low back. So hopefully that makes sense. You won't be able to see pails and rails because they are isometric, right? So iso meaning no change, metric meaning in length. So your tissue is not changing length at all because you're not moving when you do it. So we've got that press through the elbows. Quick check to see if you can gather a little bit more. So give me a nice full exhale, push through the elbows a little more, create more space between your shoulder blades. There we go. So I've got a nice stretch in the front of my hip there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to think about getting heavy, heavy, heavy on these blocks and trying to swing my leg through into the ground. We'll start our first pails contraction. 20% effort to start. Make your way up to 40. 60, 80, get heavy on those blocks. Your left leg is getting lighter and lighter on the ground. And then your greatest, safest, pain-free effort and holding that. Don't let your pelvis position change. <sighs> Keep breathing the entire time, driving that thigh down for another six, 
five, four, three, two, one, and then reverse. You're trying to make your leg lighter on the blocks, but you are not letting your pelvis position change. Keep holding, keep holding, keep holding. Squeeze that ball behind your knee if you have one. Don't let your weight shift to the side. If you notice yourself trying to lean to the left right now, I'm gonna ask you to use one of those blocks to block yourself on the next round. Keep making that leg light for now, for another four, three, two, one, then slowly relax. If you can tolerate staying in this position, stay in this position, we're gonna do another round. If you need to come out of it, you can come out of it, shake your leg out, then come back into it. Now, once again, if when you were doing that, like I said, if you noticed that your body was trying to lean off to the side, take your extra block, place it on the outside of your leg so that if you lean over, you get that feedback and you make sure you don't knock that block over. Now, for those of you that have stayed there the whole time, I'm not gonna keep you there too long. For those of you that have come out, you don't get too long of a break for that same reason. If you do need a break, please hit pause. That's one of the beautiful things about this video. So if you're doing this class and at any point you're like, okay, my opposite leg needs a break, just hit pause, take the break, come back to it. So we're gonna come back into it. Now the pails is gonna look the exact same. The rails, we're gonna switch the focus. So all you're gonna think about doing this time is instead of just thinking, make my leg lighter, I'm gonna have you focus on your pelvis and you're gonna think, drop my tail down more or roll my pelvis back more. So you're trying to pull that bone in the front of your pelvis up and towards you or up towards the ceiling to tuck your tailbone. That's gonna be your rails contraction on this round. Pails is gonna be the same. So once we're in position, we're gonna press through our elbows, exhale. Good, so we're in that stretch and then we're driving down through the front of the thigh, 20% effort to start. Making your way up to 40, 60, 80, and your greatest, safest, pain-free effort. This is your last pale's contraction on that leg. Make your leg as heavy as you possibly can on the blocks or on those blocks and drive down. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't let up for another five, four, three, two, one. Then you're reversing, focus is on the tailbone. You're trying to drop your tailbone down. You're squeezing your glute. You're trying to pull yourself into a deeper stretch in the front of your hip using your pelvis. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Your leg isn't gonna get lighter on the blocks on this one. That's okay, your focus is on your pelvis right now. We're gonna keep holding that for another five, four, three, two, one, slowly relax, don't leave the position, slow your breathing down, calm yourself back down, then you can slowly come out of it.